Oh. Hi, and welcome to the Veronica Harris Show. I'm your host, Veronica Harris, and I have with me today... Gregory Harris, co-host. You not my co-yogi? Oh yeah, co-yogi. And the reason why I'm calling you the co-yogi is because today we have a guest who's going to show us some yoga moves and talk to us about yoga and the benefits of yoga. And that's crazy because I woke up this morning thinking I need to deepen my practice of yoga. The, your practice? Yeah, deepen my practice. So have you done yoga before since you say you have a practice? I've been dibbling and dabbling. You've been dibbling and dabbling. Dibbling, dabbling. Remember, uh, I was uh, on the summer, I was training. Yes. And you introduced me to the downward dog, told me that was the best stretch I could ever do. Yes. And uh, yeah, it worked out. Okay. Well, also, yoga not only can it help you with stretching and obviously improving physical fitness, but it can also help you in terms of stress relief, relaxation, because of the deep breathing and the meditation that's a part of it. It can help, you know, calm you down. And meditation is a big piece of everything now. I mean, a lot of people coming into it. Uh, my supervisor actually asked me to start my ending my classes with that to try to curtail some of the... Uh, some of the uh, you know, rambunctiousness of the students. Rambunctiousness of yeah. the students? All right, so you're going to teach them downward facing dog? I'm a, yep, downward facing dog, exalted warrior. Uh, well, I, I, I think you should start off with Child's the, pose, well, yeah. mountain pose, but I think you should, tree pose. But I think I know you, a lot of poses. I told you I've been dibbling in that. I said you've been dibbling, but I think you should. Three-legged dog, but I downward think, dog. Okay, but I'm just saying, I did, trust me, there are hundreds of poses. I mean, you can study yoga for your lifetime and still not touch on everything. However, I think the basic thing, you should start them off with the sun salutation. And that is... How you know? Excuse me, because I know a lot. Which and that is... expert tell us what to start Yes, with. and that's where we're going to have our expert come on here next. And he is going to tell us about yoga and talk about some of these poses and show us some of these poses that you were talking about. So sit back, relax, and we'll be right back. And welcome back. Today we have with us a yoga instructor by the name of Jarek Browner. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> so, he, hey. oh, Gregory. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, um, well, first of all, we would like to talk to you about, we'll find out, first of all, what types of yoga do you practice? Because there are different types of yogas. There are not one type of yoga. There's what they call Ashtanga yoga, which is a bit more athletic. Um, a, lot, a lot more movement is involved with it. Then there's the Hatha yoga, which is like breathing. So that's uh, less uh, movement involved. And then there's also the Bikram or the hot yoga, as they call it, where you yeah. practice yoga in like a 95 degree room. I, I, I did that one time. I don't understand how you can do that because <laughs> sweat was dripping every place and you just find yourself slipping on the mat. So, but a lot of people swear by it and they practice it. So what exactly do you um, teach? Well, mine is a, a combination of Ashtanga, power and Dharma mixed all together in like one big pot. Mm -hmm. And well, first of all, um, I said like Ashtanga is a little bit more like athletic as well as movement. What is Dharma? Dharma, the best way I could describe Dharma would be real flowy. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, it's not necessarily the flow class, but mm -hmm. a lot of the movements aren't as in Ashtanga, they're real pristine. It's right. crisp. You hit the pose, boom, hold it. Next one. Dharma is more like and up and down. So and you smooth back bend. So you move from one to the next. Yeah. More of like a continuous motion. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. All right. That's very good. And how long have you been teaching yoga? I've been teaching for just a few months. Mm -hmm. So not too long since May. I finished my practice at Yoga District. Mm -hmm. And they had a real inclusive program talking about the philosophies, anatomy, mm -hmm. and really going in depth into how the poses actually affect the body and the different muscle groups. Mm -hmm. So 
I learned a lot and then following afterwards just practicing consistently every day learning and understanding how these poses are affecting me and how to get comfortable in an uncomfortable position because mm -hmm. that's what I feel yoga is really about mm -hmm. it's being able to breathe when your body's contorted and you're like I do not know how to be comfortable in this pose or mm -hmm. in this position and it's still finding the calm within the madness which is kind of like life I was just gonna say, that's kind of <laughs> like life you know yeah. trying to find comfort when you're uncomfortable and finding you know that peace and you know the, the chaos of the storm which is like life most of the time unfortunately but yeah so um what got you started into yoga oh i was working at a job very stressful job very uh time oriented you have to be here at this time if you're early you're late so mm. i was like hmm i don't know how i'm gonna pull this off early you're late yes if you're on time you're fired <laughs> oh yeah. yeah so i was like okay you I'm know, about to quit. Oh, go. I'm about to say, you know what? Tom Coughlin, the, the former uh, head coach of the New York Giants, he used to be like, if you're on time, you're late. Yeah, no, I ain't so. never heard. This is the first time I heard if, if you're, you're early, early, you're late. fired. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, go ahead. So uh, I was like, all right, I'm about to quit this job, and it's a lot of movement, so I really don't want to gain weight at all. What can I do in D.C. with a small amount of space that I can get a great workout, and I'm against going to the gym? Mm. I was like, yoga it is. I'll give it a try. So I went to my first class. It was a slow meditative class, and it was not my speed. Mm -hmm. I was like, I do not like this. Mm -hmm. So then I tried an Ashtanga class, mm -hmm. and it was just poof, 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 move after move. I'm like, I left that class. I passed out in Savasana. <laughs> I went to sleep. And after walking out, I was like, okay, I can do this. This is what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. This that type of exercise. Mm. So I just went hard. Just went all the way in, practiced it uh, about an hour and a half sequence every mm. day for mm. several months. And then I was like, okay, this I enjoy this. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how I got into it. <laughs> now they say, well, you know, the birthplace of yoga is in India, mm -hmm. and there are hundreds of poses in you know yoga so I mean but they also say that you could practice this for your lifetime and you could still not you know master it all mm -hmm. type of deal do you feel the same way about that absolutely absolutely it's it's all about pushing yourself and finding your limit and then pressing past it and mm -hmm. finding a way to do it safely as well so I disagree oh god that was <laughs> you said you can practice it your lifetime and not master it yes anything yeah. can be mastered what is your definition of Give me of a lifetime. <laughs> you can give me a lifetime, I'll master anything. What is your, what? Go ahead, Ms. Brown. What is your definition of mastery? Uh, defi my definition of mastery is doing it to uh, all specifications and requirements. But what if you get in there, and just like this Lotus pose, I'm doing Lotus. Technically, right. you could say that I've mastered Lotus. Yeah, it looks like you mastered it to me. But <laughs> then I can go deeper in Lotus. I can go even more deeper. Mm. So Levels is that mastery? Oh. Then maybe I just bind behind the back. Mm, see, got you. Then I can go backwards, I can forward fold. There's different, it's so much in it. It's so many alterations, so many variations that true mastery doesn't necessarily exist because you might have a body type that can't do necessarily this, but I don't have the body type that can do what you can. Okay. All right. See? <laughs> <laughs> As you tell, we're brothers and sisters. Yeah. So yeah. No. <laughs> no, but so, and I, and I think with yoga, part of the philosophy, if I'm not mistaken, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, that in trying to, you know, gain mastery of yoga, it is not about the destination. It is about the journey that you go through to well, as you're learning these poses and moving on from different levels definitely definitely each pose you learn something different about yourself mm -hmm. like i can sit in this pose and i can say hmm this is this is comfortable but then it's like all right well this hip is a little bit more open than this hip maybe mm -hmm. i can loosen this hip up and get a little bit more flexibility out of it it's mm -hmm. like what you learn throughout trying to accomplish that pose mm -hmm. and trying to get deeper in that pose mm -hmm. so okay. Well, Gregory and I are also both health and physical education teachers, and as physical education teachers, we both learn that there's a skill-related um, fitness components, and there's also 
Health-related. Health-related. Mm -hmm. um, fitness health components health components I'm sorry and of course with the skill related there's flexibility agility balance uh, coordination and power power and then uh, with the health there's muscular endurance muscular strength cardiovascular cardiovascular and I think there's one there's one more two body more. composition body composition yes mm -hmm. so those are the health um, those are different components so which um, which components do you think yoga specifically benefits anyone in particular or to be all or you know everything mm -hmm. I was gonna say that too but I want to see what you say everything okay it takes everything into accountability and also the internal organs because a lot of times we don't necessarily work out our internal organs or even under mm -hmm. we keep them nice and contained in our chest and we don't try to really twist or do too much that will actually move them into a uncomfortable position Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if we don't do that, they get comfortable in that position. And any time they get irritated or move from that position, you might have an issue. Mm -hmm. You can create different issues. So with yoga, with all the different twists and the deep breathing, you also expand and move your internal organs, which provides internal flexibility to them. Mm -hmm. So you can move a little bit more smoothly as opposed to stark movements. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, would you say that um, yoga can be, like I said, you didn't like the gym. <laughs> okay, you didn't like the gym. So, and as, again, as educators, especially with young people that come into the, um, our classes, sometimes they, they don't like the traditional things that we may teach and things of that nature. So we're always looking for different types of workouts. Like now CrossFit is big and things of that nature that we do. Um, so do you feel yoga could definitely be a part in a physical education curriculum? I think it should. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it could make really big strides for the children as well because it also in involves the mental. Mm -hmm. And I believe the body is just a physical representation of the mind. Mm -hmm. Depending on how you think, it goes directly into how your body is, how you hold your body and everything. So. Well, the six components of health, um, I know three of them, well, obviously physical uh, fit, physical is one, but there's also the mental and the spiritual. Those are also the components of health, um, components of wellness, rather. So I think that yoga could definitely benefit to, I guess, with the breathing and the meditation, definitely with the mental, and then I guess the, philo the philosophical practice that you go along with it can definitely um, work towards the spiritual. Definitely, and stress as well, because mm -hmm. it'll a lot of the philosophy will hold you, it'll show you that you can hold yourself accountable for certain things and the things that you can't necessarily have any control over to let them go. Mm -hmm. And it can be that simple sometimes. We, I find myself stressing over things that I have no control over. And it's like, all right, do I continue to stress about this or do I just say, all right, I did the best that I could, let me move forward and try to, you know, further myself and where I'm trying to be and what mm -hmm. I'm trying to achieve. Okay. All right, so here we go. First question, mm -hmm. how long does it take, uh, how many, like the training for to be an instructor, how long does that take? 200 hours. 200 hours. Which not uh, see, this is, you don't get here started. Cause <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, every time we have an instructor or someone who is very good at a different sport or activity, he wants to know how, because his next thing is he's either making his comeback in that <laughs> something <laughs> or he's about to become the next oh something. <laughs> so That's what he does. I, I, uh -oh. I'm assuming when you get started, the growth and the benefits are kind of gradual. It takes over time to kind of see, see the, the change. Is that true in yoga? What's your definition of? Yes, it is a gradual. Gradual, very gradual. It just depends so on. What now. was your first breakthrough you made, and how long did that take? <sighs> That's a good question. That's a good question. Well, you know what? Since you're gonna think this is a good question, look like you have to ponder it. <laughs> yeah. We are going to, you know, go into our break so they give you a little mm -hmm. bit of chance to think, uh, think about it. And then also when we come, when we come back. Um, we want to see a few of these poses. Maybe you can show us a few things, give us some um, ideas and tips on how to increase our practice or better our practice. But we're going to give you time to think about that answer. Okay. So, and when we come back, we're going to get more into the poses. Oh, I'm with it. All right. So <laughs> stay right with us and we will be right back. Every day. 
across America. Excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. So you start by pressing your heels down into the mat. You can rock back a little bit from the side, interior. Lay the balls of your feet down. Spread your toes like little fingers. That's what they are anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Little fingers. <laughs> Hands are prayer to your heart. Mm -hmm. Exhale everything out your lungs. Inhale, arms up, gaze up. Exhale, four fold. Exhale, step or jump back to push up position. Lower down to chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog, chest forward, chin up. Exhale, down dog, hips up and back. And breathe. We generally stay here for about five breaths. Each inhale, raising your hips up and back, stretching out the lower spine, and also feeling that stretch in the hamstrings. Oh yeah, feel them in the hamstrings. <laughs> and each exhale, relaxing into the pose as if it's comfortable. No, it's not. We all know it's not. <laughs> <laughs> inhale, step or jump forward. Exhale, forward fold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> inhale, lift up, arms up, gaze up. Exhale, hands to heart. And those are the basic movements for the sun salutations. Yeah. And you'd repeat them maybe five. You can do them 108 times if you'd like. 108? Is that like the Guinness Book of World Records? No. <laughs> That's one of the, uh, one of the, you're supposed to chant mantras or mm -hmm. any type of, anything that means something to you, do it that many times. Mm -hmm. And if it means something to you, do it 108 times. Why 108? Is there any reason why 108? I'm not exactly sure on that number, but I know all the beads are. So when you give the prayers, you count the beads oh, okay. for each one. Or if you go through for breathing exercises, you can breathe and count one for each breath. Mm -hmm. And just to get that 108. I'm not 100% sure, but now you, you gave me some homework. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, okay, that's what we do here. I'm a teacher, I give homework. <laughs> I'm with it. <laughs> seven times 12 isn't 108, is it? No. No. No, no. seven times 12 is 108. 98. Okay. No, 94. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that's what the show was. Okay, so those are the basics. Now, mm -hmm. what have we been doing it for a while, and now we are a little bit more um, advanced. So what else can we add to it? Okay, that's pretty. The same way, you can start it off the same way. You can inhale your arms up and go for a little bit of a back bend. Exhale, four fold. Inhale, chin up. Exhale, step or jump back. You can go to a handstand. Whoa. Oh, oh, see. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Inhale, up dog. I'm going to watch. Exhale, down dog. When in down dog, you can inhale your hips up and back. And then relax, pulling your chest towards the mat. Really stretching out that lower back. And you can inhale, step or jump forward. You can go to crow. You can go to handstand. You can go to eight angle pose. I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be. And then four fold. And then back up. So it's just different options. You can change it and vary it however you want. Greg was like this. Handstand was something else. Your hands there was something else. Thank you. It was. The, I would say the most one, the, I guess the most advanced that I got is that when you're in downward facing dog, you lift, you know, you hold one leg up while mm -hmm. you're in that pose too. So in other words, it would, it would For be a like little hip here, opener. and then you would be like this. Yeah, see if you can kick that leg behind you. Oh, then, then it go yeah. like this. Yeah, and then flip your dog, boom. Yeah. Press your hips up. Maybe I, you can, up. Uh, this <laughs> way. You Twist your arm the other way. Where, other way? Bring it up to my hand. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Turn it around. Gaze. Follow. Oh yeah. Follow. yeah okay. Yes. Absolutely. You got it. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. and, and lower push it down. Push your hips up. Push your hips up. Mm hmm. And lower it down. 
Oh no, you want me to do a back yeah. to work out? <laughs> Call me, bring me out. <laughs> So yeah, it's different different ways to change it and vary it up a lot. You mm -hmm. can go to either side, you can go to the flip dog, or you can go to the four wheel. Okay. So it's just Well, you know what, why don't you, it, let's, let us step back a step or two, <laughs> and let us see that, because, you know, we're telling people what, you know, you're giving it the, the mm -hmm. names, but, you know, some people need to see. Visual, we're very visual <laughs> yeah, creatures. Yeah, very visual. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. <laughs> cook. Fire in the hole. And chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road chip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. Okay, well, you shocked us with, <laughs> with some of that stuff you were doing. I mean, going into the wheel and all of that stuff. I know Gregory over here was looking like amazed. I'm floored. I'm still down on the floor. Yeah, you floored. You're still down on the floor. Okay, so if you could just t take us through that, you know, from the downward facing dog, the leg, you know, from there. So okay. we'll start. Okay. From downward facing dog. So you're in downward facing dog. Okay. Raise up and down. Raise up one leg. Bring it behind, and then when you rotate it, you're doing a hip opener, so this is a way to get more flexibility in your hips. Flip over, and stretch, lean back. And into the wheel. Wow, okay. And then you can bring it down, the wheel down. All right, lower it down. Get it, intensify the stretch, deepen the stretch. And back up. And back over. Yes, and what you do to one side, obviously you have to do the other. Rotate the leg. For the hip. And flip over, reach back, 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 back into the wheel. Yes. And then down further oh lord okay you're bringing the feet in he's bringing the feet in okay one oh, all right so just one foot not both at the same time just one foot all right deep in that stretch and back up and over and again into downward facing dog and finally, head up again. Woo! Oh my it's goodness. Yeah, that's a... You kind of look like a contortionist for a little bit. Well, you, you did that before you started yoga? Yeah. You, huh? Okay, I was about to say, that's cheating if you was already <laughs> could contort. Man, that's not that impressive. But... Okay, well, it's, it would still be impressive. Why are you knocking with... If you can contort, well, then that's... Don't knock people's things. Okay. You know, don't downplay it. Okay. So now that was, you know, just a variation on downward dog and how to, I guess, deepen the practice, deepen the stretch. But the basic is the sun salutation. Now there's a sun salutation A and a sun salutation B. And what is the difference between the two? A lot. Okay. I know one has warrior, the warrior pose, warrior one, and the one does not. And one starts with chair, and one starts with Tadasana. Okay, and this is our mountain pose. <laughs> mountain pose. Okay, do so. Do you know chair? Huh? Do you know chair? I know chair. Do you know chair? Do chair. Huh? Do chair. You do chair. Say, uh huh? <laughs> <laughs> I do know chair. But anyway, this is not about me. Okay, it's about our guests. So if you could please just show us um, sun salutation A, how that looks if you do it like a regular practice going from one to the other. Okay. And um, then after that, then you'll show us sun salutation B. Okay. Okay, so you just want to go from A to B. Straight into Straight, it. okay, we like that. Go straight into it. So, hand to heart prayer, getting started. Tadasana, mountain pose. Fold over. Breathe, chin up. And back into plank or chaturanga. And, okay. 
And notice you'll hear a lot of the exhaling, you hear the heavy breathing. It's not because he has sinuses, it's just that that's a part of the practice to breathe in and out and to deeply breathe. Because the mind follows the breath. Yes. He's back and down into Shadaranga, which is actually, this is Cobra Pose, if you didn't know. Downward facing dog. And back up into Dasana, Mountain Pose. Okay. So you got a sweat going. Now this is chair. Mm -hmm. You know how to do chair? Master chair. Ooh, that's, you know, that's going to the handstand kick up. Back there. I need two months. I'm going to do that in two months. Two months. And this is the warrior one pose. back into where you want. Hold for five. Because you want to get that stretch. And jump to the front. And back into chair pose. Second. Yeah, because you can't just do it once. Wow. Well, I was watching you do the different poses and I was just noticing, and I don't know if you know this way, but again, the balance, obviously, with doing the handstand and everything, like your balance is definitely um, coming into play. The muscular endurance just to hold the poses and then also your muscular strength because basically you are lifting your own body weight and moving it from place to place. And that is, and there's also cardiovascular because I can see once you get moving, it's like, it's continuous, it's constant. <laughs> There's no slowing down here. There's no timeouts. Let me try to flip dog. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna let you try to flip dog. Okay. Go ahead. Boom. And it went like this? Kick your leg no. Back. Oh, leg first. Yeah, right leg up and back, bend it behind. Yeah. Yeah, over. There it is. And there it lean is. back. Look back, look back. Mm -hmm. Follow your hand. Follow your hand. Rotate that one. Yeah. I think that's where I'm we stuck. Can, we can get right here. Push your hips up. <laughs> Push your hips oh, up. There it is. All right. Boom. Push some more. Because right. you, you still, he's not Inhale. really. There it is. <laughs> Inhale again. Exhale. Push. There it is. See, yeah. if you use your Come core. Okay. There it is. There you go. Not too uh, bad. Yeah. yeah, your flip dog was doing kind of rusty too. That's my first time doing the flip. I don't care. Good job. Good <laughs> job. Good job. All right, thank you. All right, well, you've showed us these great poses. Greg, let me switch positions with you, okay? okay? So I can get you over there. All right, so you've showed us these great poses and that people um, can obviously practice and stuff like that. So um, is yoga big in D.C.? Yes. So there's a lot of places to find a place to practice? Ridiculous. From yeah. beginners to... Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Uh, there's different studios. Uh, I, I actually teach at Culture Coffee every Thursday. It's a donation base. Okay. All right. So um, that's good. So basically people just Google where they need to go. Yeah. Just Google it's where they need to go. There's millions of places. Or um, I even saw a book in uh, Barnes and Noble. I saw a, a book one time said, you know, you just learn how to do yoga poses mm -hmm. that way. So, well, thank you for that. That was awesome. We are going to take a break and then we're going to come back with what is Veronica thinking? You will stay around for that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. And we will be right back. Taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. 
the net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Hi, and welcome back. We're now at the time of what is Veronica thinking? And today I am thinking about dibbling and dabbling. Yes, Gregory gave me that uh, idea about dibbling and dabbling. And as we've learned in yoga, you cannot dibble and dabble. You have got to be committed. You, you know, some people are just interested and then there are people that are committed. You have to be committed if you want to um, get the benefits of your yoga practice. And not only can you not dibble and dabble in yoga, but it goes for life too. You can't just dibble and dabble in life. You got to be committed. You got to be in it to win it, as they say. You have to, you know, practice. You have to practice your practice for life. Ms. Brown? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? It's definitely a lifelong practice. Like we were saying earlier, uh, you can practice your entire life and never master every pose. So mm -hmm. I feel as though... Yeah, it's definitely a, a lifelong commitment for me. And if it's... you want to be good at it, or if you want, now I'll say good, because that, that assumes that there's an end point. Mm -hmm. But if you want to um, be advance throughout the different levels, if you aspire to uh, self-actualization, to being the best that you can be, then you have to you know, be committed to the practice in order to get better. You can't just mm -hmm. dibble and dabble, you know, you're in, you're out, sometimes in, sometimes not. You do what you don't, you can't do that. You have to be in it. And in, in order to get the most out of life and to be the best that you can be, you have to be committed to doing the work, whatever it is for your life, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Definitely consistency. Yes, consistency. Well, along my research, I found that uh, most, most people on the planet are good starters. You're not a good starter once you get started in rolling. You, you're good at that. Mm -hmm. But there's very few people that are good finishers. All right? And uh, as the king of the devil and the devil, that's what I struggle <laughs> with, the finishing part. You know, I love to get set it off. Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't always interested in seeing it come through to the end. But I like what you said about your, your breakthrough. And it wasn't a physical breakthrough you had. It was more so of a, a mental breakthrough and awareness that you came about uh, first, and then that went and you got the wristband to know to walk your truth. I, I'm gonna find, find a wristband or something similar. <laughs> well, I mean, but that's again, this is something that can be transferred into life. Again, it's not the journey of just being good at it. If you want to take it to sports, it's not just being good at, you know, making a layup or shooting free throws. It's about becoming. Um, a master, if you will, at all the aspects of that game. You know, not just the skills that you learn, but also the strategies. And in order to do that, you have to be committed. You know, there's a lot of us that are very good at doing things. We have very, very good at skills that will help us in life. But do we also have, do we also know the strategies? Do we also know how to negotiate um, different situations. Do we also know how to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation? And that's what yoga can help you do. And but again, it requires full commitment, not dibbling and dabbling. <laughs> Any last words on that? Hey Jackie, you got a minute. You got an apprentice now. You gonna, you gonna be my master? I'm, I'm gonna be your apprentice, and you are gonna show me how. You gonna have me doing handstands in like two months. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing to it but to do it, right? Yeah, that's okay. Like you just heard him say, he let to set it off. All right. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I'm gonna hold you to it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming on. Yeah, I mean, to get to the show. Me. Thank you for it. showing. <laughs> Loosen the way we're very flexible. Oh yeah. yeah. You know. Um, thank you for showing those wonderful poses and talking about talking to us about yoga and your practice and you know things your journey and um hopefully all of you out there have learned something from this show and you will possibly and hopefully you will come back again to see us as we tell more stories learn about more truths and 
how to walk in our truths, and how to be committed in life, but always from a sports perspective. Why? <laughs> because this is the Veronica Harris Show. Thank you, and see you next time. <laughs>